Team Next Fest is something that will forever frustrate me. It's a great initiative, letting new games from up-and-coming studios take the spotlight instead of the flavor of the month or 50 different porn asset flips, and you even get to play demos. It's almost like we went back in time. Except that unlike in the good old nostalgic loser days, the demos are only available for a very limited time and anyone who didn't try them during that period can go suck a dick. Thanks, Gaben. Sarcasm aside, we are close to the end of March, but as you might already know, I like living in the past. So we are going to talk about three demos from February's next fest. First off, Scathe. Yeah, that sums up what I'm about to do. This is a game with neat ideas, and at first glance it looks like it should be great. It's a first-person bullet hell, where you play some guy who wields weapons that look supremely cool, and your objective is to escape from a labyrinth while blowing up demons into little chunks to score all the points. Sounds like a fantastic time, but in practice it's currently not very good. Scathe got some ice on it after people noticed that one of the weapons looks a whole lot like the super shotgun from Doom Eternal. And that probably isn't a coincidence. You start the game and right away you pick up your first and only weapon, the Hellhammer. It's a fully automatic machine gun with infinite ammo, and it has a secondary firing mode that launches some rockets that run on a cooldown. Which the game doesn't show anywhere. Okay, technically it's not the only weapon, but it might as well be since the demo ends when you pick up the super shotgun lookalike. And that's the problem, a lot of the neat ideas aren't there yet. You've got a dash move that sends enemies flying, though a bit floppy and unsatisfying, and the demo level has multiple exits, which is a simple but very neat idea that gives you multiple paths through the campaign or it would if there were any other levels in this demo. From the moment you start shooting, the confusion starts setting in. What are all those shards that explode out of every enemy for? What are the runes for? Is there a point to getting the screen splattered with blood and having to wipe every few moments? The short story is that they don't really do anything right now. Shards will eventually do something besides granting you points, the runes will unlock new paths through the labyrinth, and the blood is supposed to be a risk versus reward mechanic, which, again, could be interesting. Trading feasibility for extra damage or extra speed could be interesting. But it's not there, so yeah. I have to wonder if releasing a demo like this hasn't been a marketing blunder, because while I can see that the game is obviously unfinished, the average kiddie on the Steam forums might not. Movement is a bit floaty, the shooting feels a bit flaccid, many sound effects like oomph or are straight up missing, and there's a ton of stuff that confuses you, because you think it might do something, but it actually doesn't. Certain parts of the level are also way harder than others, which is certainly going to lead to people rich quitting and writing it off as a bad game. Which to be fair it kind of is right now. But you know, the game isn't finished yet. That text at the top of the screen isn't just for show. This isn't the kind of AAA publisher bollocks of releasing trailers one week before launch and claiming the footage is from an early alpha version. Scathe has been in development since at least 2019, by a very small team of three people who have many years of experience in game development. Maybe I'm being naive, but I'd like to believe that the game will be in a much better state by the time it's released. Everyone likes a good underdog story, right? On a more positive note, let's talk about Incision. Okay, so I lied. This wasn't actually part of the next fest event, it's just that the demo was released on the day it started, and I just thought it was cool and wanted to talk about it. The name Incision isn't a coincidence. The story is that the world has been infected by some weird flesh monstrosity. You're the doctor and the prescription is shotgun to the face. 
The environment is full of pulsating meat walls and you're being chased by monsters with syringes for arms. Which is every bit as icky as it sounds, but in a way that is metal as hell. Incision is raw and filtered 90s FPS, and it does what it wants to do with surgical precision. Besides a pointless life system and a double jump, it plays exactly how you would expect it to. No reloading, no dash, no sprinting, no wall running, no ledge grabbing, no glory kills, no nothing extra. It's pure movement, quick reflexes, health and ammo pickups, and secrets to find. Reject modernity, return to boomer. The demo has five weapons, starting with the spear, which isn't terribly useful because it's a melee weapon in a first-person shooter, but it gets to shine by slicing tumors and faces to progress through the level. You also have a revolver that is weak but accurate, and you can also twirl it around like a fidget spinner. Sometimes it will glow, and firing it at that moment will cause tons of damage. The quad shotgun is exactly what it says, a shotgun with four barrels. Seems like a missed opportunity how you can't shoot all of them at once, but you can fire a quick burst of four shots, resulting in piles of gore. Truly a weapon for the ultimate soldier. The machine gun shoots bullets very fast, but can also spend 15 ammo to launch grenades that bounce around a bit. And finally, there's the rocket launcher, which again is exactly what it says. It even fires bursts of four shots too, just like the quad shotgun. The spear and revolver are outclassed by the other three weapons, but all of them feel good to shoot, and so does blowing up enemies and moving around. The gameplay has a good chunkiness that matches the simple models and animations, but without feeling sluggish or weak. It also runs like a 90s FPS and doesn't have weird performance issues, like certain other commercially released Unity-powered FPS games that I know of. So points for that. If you don't like the dithering filter, you can turn it off too. Overall, I guess I don't actually have much to say about Incision, but pretty much all of it is positive. This game is like a good bacon cheeseburger. It's nothing you haven't seen before, and it's not going to advance video games into some greater art form that makes everyone grow fedoras. But damn if I don't want to go back to it on a regular basis. And hey, because it technically isn't part of the next fast event, both you and I can go play it whenever we want, without having to resort to pirating a friggin' demo which, yeah, that's something I ended up doing with the demo for Turbo Overkill, which is what spurred me to make this video in the first place and single-handedly propelled the full version into my list of most exciting releases of the year. The story is that your Johnny Turbo, some punk with a chainsaw hidden inside his leg and a mission to clean house in Paradise City, which is under the control of the most advanced AI ever created. In other words, kill everyone with a chainsaw to the face. But you know what? Maybe I lied again, because this game is less boomer shooter and more like the new wave of super fast shooters with an emphasis on mobility that I am really, really glad for. The closest comparison I can give you is Ultra Kill, because it has the same energy when it comes to the flow of combat. Death comes swiftly if you're not careful, enemies hit fast, and they hit hard. But so do you, chainsaw to the face. You also have your obligatory double jump and dash move, and later on you get the ability to run on walls. The only thing it's missing is a grappling hook, but of course the full game is going to have one. Welcome to the age of the hook, everybody gets one now. The real meat is on the slide, which deploys your chainsaw and propels you forward, and the faster you go, the more damage it deals. I can't stress enough how nice it feels to clear your way through a group of mobs with this. Just don't slide into an explosive barrel. It also serves as a way to quickly move around the levels, which are very open and very vertical, letting you freely play around with your movement abilities. 
The only problem with it is that it renders the regular dash kind of pointless half of the time. Sure, it's more flexible, but it runs on a cooldown and doesn't give you a big boost of speed like the sliding does. You already have a chainsaw leg, so the game doesn't give you a dedicated melee weapon. Instead, your arsenal begins with the Magnums, a pair of smart pistols with decent damage and speed, and the ability to walk onto multiple enemies for a powerful shot. Next is the Waster, an energy shotgun of sorts that can also be charged up to fire a projectile that creates an energy explosion. This is followed up by the UCs, which can both be held to shoot fast, or you can holster one of them for higher accuracy and lower damage output. The fourth weapon is the... Boomer. Please clap. It's your typical sawed-off shotgun that deals tons of damage at close range, but this one also comes with the ability to... Boomer shoot sticky grenades. The final weapon is the Twin Sandiary, which you might miss the first time playing through the demo. It's a Gatling gun that runs on the same ammo as the UCs, but it also doubles as a flamethrower, because why not? The thing to keep in mind about the alternate firing modes for the Magnum's Waster and Boomer is that they run on a cooldown, which I guess incentivizes you to quick swap weapons, although they are all pretty effective even without those. Killing enemies also earns you credits, which can be spent on ammunition or on upgrade chips that can be placed into various body parts, although I only managed to find leg chips in the demo. There isn't much variety to pick from, but hopefully there will be plenty of customization options in the full game. Besides that, I only have a few other tiny blemishes to complain about, such as the boomer needing a more punchy sound effect to match its damage potential. It would also be nice to have some better anti-aliasing, because holy hell it's Shimmer City at 1080p. Either way, Turbo Overkill is shaping up to be one of the crown jewels of 2022. It's a game with an attitude, and if you're a fan of games like Ultra Kill or Doom Eternal, I recommend keeping this one in your sights. Oh, and good news, while I was writing this script, Early Access on Steam was announced for April 22nd, so I guess it's not too far away anyway. So there you have it my highlights from the last Steam Next Fest event. I know it's weird that I'm covering something new that you can't enjoy for yourself, and I'm sure that there was a ton of other demos I could have played. I normally don't pay much attention to these events, but maybe I should start doing that. There's a new Next Fest in tune, so keep an eye out for that. But at least with this one, I found stuff to be excited for, and hopefully so did you.